right, so this is James, and I'm here with my friend Wes out of Palmyra, New Jersey. Uh, Wes is the pastor at Central Baptist Church in Palmyra. So thank you yes. for talking with me, Wes. I'm glad to be on. So uh, briefly, tell me a little bit about uh, Central Baptist Church in Palmyra and what, uh, what it means to the community there. Teeny little church. Um, very, very generous. Um, so we've become a very hospitable place. A local groups will, you know, come in and meet. Uh, we've supported the local arts school, uh, musical arts school. They come and do the recitals here now. Uh, the directors kind of join the church through that. Uh, AA groups meet down. We have an immigrant uh, Brazilian church that that shares the building with us. Uh, so it's 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 busy for being so small and actually not having a whole lot of programs. Uh, also the local improvement association that's trying to kind of raise the community involvement for all residents of the community is also kind of is meeting at our church. So, you know, we become very involved that way. So now with the COVID crisis, how is that changing some of the things that you've been doing or trying to do? Oh my gosh, it's changed everything. Um, so, Unfortunately, because the the building is that hospitable space, you know, AA can't meet. Um, the Brazilian Church can't meet in the space. Uh, obviously, the Palmyra Improvement Association can't meet in the space, so they've all kind of gone gone virtual. I've tried to, especially for AA, because I didn't want to take that support system away from people without offering something in in return. Um, so I've offered to kind of set them up and get them working with Zoom and and you know, told them for this quarter, don't even consider paying for us, even if we are back in the building. Um, you know, they get the, the Zoom account to where they can, you know, go longer times and have more people and, and get more features. Um, a, the, the director of the music arts school has become a, a Facebook sensation. So that's been kind of fun. So she's, she's doing, she's made all her business online, actually. Um, she doesn't have her heat turned on because she wants to be able to, to continue to, to run the school and to pay her faculty, even though everything's online. Um, she reduced prices of the lessons by half. And uh, during the weekdays, she's doing a music, music class for kids for free, which is really kind of cool. And um, she's starting a guitar lesson, a guitar class for adults on Mondays that starts, uh, started yesterday. So it's kind of neat to watch all these different groups kind of go their own own way and do some creative things and and see what happens from there. So in terms of the congregation of Central Baptist, though, what what are some of the things that you're doing to try and um, continue to keep that community connected? Uh, lots of social networking. Um, one of the things that I've learned is that you communicate with people the way that they feel comfortable. Uh, so I'm really lucky because the people that have, I've been here, good grief, I think I've been here 18 years now, 17 years now will be, will be Mother's Day. So the people who have survived that long are all, have all learned to get on the internet because that's, they know that's kind of my native realm. Uh, but I got a lot of folks that I, that I have to text with. I got a lot of folks that I call uh, on the phone because it's just how they communicate. Some folks want to do email or even Facebook messenger. Um, for the big group stuff, we, we do our stream, we do a stream on Sunday mornings. That's kind of a pared down version of worship. I'm not even, I'm not saying, you know, this is our worship time because it's totally different. Um, just bring in our musicians via Skype. And so we kind of go back and forth. Um, I've been doing online chats, like live streams with local either pastors to kind of give folks some, some spiritual advice on how to get through this. And also some local officials and local business people kind of showing people that, that the community is still functioning. Actually, I need to, I need, that reminds me, I need to call the mayor this week because I'm trying to have her on. Um, and that's kind of what we're, what we're doing. We're just trying to, to broaden out. The nice thing about the church is that the leadership isn't worried about the congregation as much as it's worried about the community. Um, so our organist, our choir director, and the church secretary all volunteer without being asked. We're like, well, we're not, don't pay us. Well, we're not doing anything, so don't pay us right now. 
which floored me because I wasn't going to deny anybody pay. The church finances aren't terrific, but they're okay. And so we went, well, what are we going to do with that money? And it's not a lot of, it's not a whole lot of money. Uh, and so the council went, well, who, who can we give it to? And so we're making, I think we're planning on making a donation to the Food Bank of South Jersey and to our local food pantry. And if it continues next month, there's two other organizations we'll look to. So that's, that's the nice thing about seeing what the church has done. It's, it's seeing itself as being responsible to help rather than just kind of hoard for ourselves. Sure. How, what do you think is going <clears throat> to happen once, um, once things are opened up a bit more? How do you see that transition back to some kind of normalcy? <laughs> I need to actually read some books. There's the nerd coming out on the aftermath of the 1918 influenza pandemic. Because the psychology from, from the little that I've seen, people are expecting the, the psychology to be really similar. And if that's the case, it was three years before people kind of got into any real sense of security being in large groups again. And we're in, we're in Philadelphia is one of the, one of the, uh, the center points of that, of that pandemic. Uh, because of a victory day parade for world war one um yay philly um and so you know it's i think there's there's almost a cultural memory here i mean most of everybody's gone now but there's a cultural memory of it and so i expect that it's going to be quite a bit of time before we get something that's feels normal and that large events are considering to be you know to be considered safe anymore uh, luckily, we have a pretty large sanctuary and not a whole lot of, of people to fill it, which is a, you know, not necessarily a good thing. But I do expect people to be masked. I do expect people to be sitting in, um, you know, social distancing, even after we come back, uh, making sure that we're, we're cleaning, you know, pretty well the space. It's a totally different universe we're going into. It, what do you think is going to change a lot from... Like, are there things that you think will stick with us uh, going on in perpetuity that we're just, we're going to take away from this and it's going to, uh, it's, it's going to just be a part of normal life going forward. What are some of those things that you think might, might. Uh, oh, handshaking's gone. And handshaking's just, it was already on its last legs anyway. It's, I mean, it's totally gone now. <laughs> um, just so passing the peace, we are we had, the two weeks before everything got shut down. I'd are, we'd already instituted that we weren't doing handshaking. We told people to pass the peace the way that they felt comfortable. I mean, you're familiar. It's, it's the you know the peace of the Lord be with you and also with you, and you pass the peace to everybody in the congregation. And so I was doing the Vulcan salute. Uh, other people were signing "I love you." Um, people were flashed. I had, I had one woman who's in her nineties. She was flashing the double peace sign. It was absolutely hysterical. <laughs> um, so that's, that's the, one of the things that I know is going to be sticking with this is that, 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 that type of physical contact is, is going away and, you know, different things that any, any time where you're passing elements like communion or, or, or even the offering, um, that's going to be something that people are going to be thinking twice about. So that's something that I'm trying to figure out how to address. And I haven't figured it out yet because you don't want to have to Purell the thing every time you change hands. Sure. So it might be, we take, it might be that we take the elements and then we pass Purell down the, down the aisle afterwards. <laughs> and then, or, or we have people come front and come forward and it's the, the three stations are, you know, the cup or the bread, the cup and Purell at yeah. the end. So everybody's, it's okay. And everybody's, you know, the people who are serving it have to be masked and, and gloves so they're not cross-contaminated. Yeah, since uh, many Catholic churches use a, uh, uh, the offering bolt plate, the offering basket is on a long pole. Yes. They, then they, the ushers reach down. So nobody actually touches it. So that might be, yes. that might become in fashion again. So I, I'm, you know, we might have to start jury rigging those up. There you go. All right. So. Well, thank you very much for taking a few minutes of your time. Thank and I much. hope you guys are staying safe and uh, that you're um, trying to stay sane, uh, locked up in the house. That, with, that with ship sailed a long time ago. <laughs> so, yes, we're trying very hard. <laughs> so, Thank you, sir. Take care. Thanks, James, and bye.